Hey there! I've been playing around with my old Oblivion bubble ship design that you might recall from a while back. The old one was fully stock and worked fairly well, but I got a lot of requests to make a version using the mod Infernal Robotics. I had never used it before, but after making these new designs, I have to say that I am in love with this mod. I don't know if I'm allowed to be in love with the mod, but I am. I initially was only going to modify the VTOL engines to create two rotating engines instead of the four engines that are on the original version. After doing this, I got it carried away and reworked the landing gears as well. Now there are three models you'll see here, and the one on the left is the original design that is fully stock, and the other two are modded with Infernal Robotics. There isn't much difference between the two other than the type of VTOL rotation and the overall weight. So let's take a look at the main functionality change here, the VTOL engines. The two models are called the IR90 and the IR180. The major difference between these two is how far the engines can rotate. The IR90 can rotate 90 degrees, but only backwards, and the 180 will rotate 90 degrees backwards and forwards, allowing it to have reverse thrusting capabilities. While the 180 has more freedom, it also makes flying a little more complex, and I actually ended up liking the IR90 more. The ship from the movie actually moves more like the IR180 though, so feel free to take your pick. I've also got them set up to move in sync with each other, but in the movie, the bubble ship was pulling some maneuvers that had the engines moving independently. I don't think my brain can handle trying to coordinate the kind of stuff mid-flight, though. The next feature I added was to make the landing legs act more like the ones in the movie. The previous design used stock landing legs that would hang in place and didn't look very good. Now both the IR-90 and 180 have some sweet fold-up action to them. The front legs in the movie actually spin around that lower sphere and tuck up under the tail of the ship, so I did my best to match that. It turned out pretty well with the legs folding up next to each other behind the body of the ship. It took a few design iterations to get them to work right, but I'm happy with where they're at now. Something to watch out for with these designs is they are fairly front heavy. The problem with recreating designs from movies is that they are usually designs that aren't exactly realistic. We can give them the benefit of the doubt but that their technology lets them get away with some stuff, but the bubble ship isn't balanced very well. My designs compensate fairly well, but if you rotate the engines all the way back at low altitudes and speeds, you'll feel the ship want to dip down. If you aren't careful, you might end up getting a little closer to the ground than you'd like. So here's what the ship looks like inside the space plane hangar. Feel free to pull apart the design and take a look at how it was built. It was semi-reassembled from scratch, with the basic cockpit design being the only salvaged component. The two parts that I used to get the rotation for the VTOL engines are the half-sized power hinges. They are easy to set up, and you can clip things through them, and they will still work just fine. The front legs are powered by the half-sized Segment B telescopic pistons. These are what extend the leg forward. The closed power hinge is attached to the front of these pistons, and that is what allows the front legs to pivot backwards and fold up behind the ship. It makes a cool little joint that works fairly well. Moving our way towards the back, you can see the tips of the pistons from the front legs sticking out. I think they make for a pretty sweet looking effect as the part model is really cool. Tucked up a little higher is the rear piston, which is the same part as the front legs. I attached the little fork to match the original design a little more closely, and it also adds some stability. Moving back to the front, we can look at some more cosmetic changes I made. I figured I'd show off the infernal robotics parts and incorporate them into the cockpit. They look really good on their own and match the guns on the bubble ship fairly closely. All the parts make for a futuristic looking cockpit, which I really like. The sphere of reaction wheels was actually created inside the VAB using A times symmetry to make it more rounded. I saved it to a sub-assembly and brought it into the space plane hangar. Be careful when using symmetry around these things as you can run into weird bugs as the space plane hangar tries to do A times symmetry. You'll end up with ghost parts that ruin the file, so save often. Now I'll bring up the servo configuration menu. This is what lets you set up controls for the individual motors. All I really tweaked here was the range of motion of certain parts. The VTOL engines I locked at 65 degrees for safety reasons. I know, I know, it's KSP. <laughs> what is this safety I speak of? Well, this design doesn't have wings, so your only lift is coming from the engines. As I mentioned earlier, the design wants to fall in its face, so locking out at 65 degrees helps make the design easier to fly. Feel free to unlock this though. These hinges are the front leg joints that fold the legs backwards. It took a fair amount of loading and testing to get the legs to fold up exactly how I wanted them to. Beyond that, nothing else needed adjusting. The groups are a little sloppy, but they work. Now the action groups are where the magic happens. After a lot of experimenting, I was able to make some efficient action groups to control the ship. Initially I had every action group filled up and it was a mess, but it's a little more streamlined now. So the stage or spacebar key will deactivate all those reaction wheels on the engines. The ship rips itself apart if you don't deactivate them. Now the 1 and 2 keys control VTOL rotation with the 1 key putting the engines in hover mode and the 2 key rotating the engines forward for travel mode. The 3 and 4 keys control the legs. I clumped all the hinges and pistons into the groups so that they work together. Basically, press the 3 key to retract the legs and the 4 key to extend them. Keep in mind that these motors use start and stop controls, meaning you have to press the key once to start them and once again to stop them. 
So if you retract the legs of the 3 key, but don't press the 3 key again once they're finished moving, you won't be able to extend the legs until you press the 3 key for the second time. I'm making it sound complex, but it's really simple. The last bit of info you need to know about Infernal Robotics is the in-flight servo control menu. This allows you to manually control the servos, but since we bound everything to action groups, you don't really need to worry about that. Now the numbers to the side control how fast the motors work. Bigger numbers mean faster movement. Feel free to adjust these however you want. I recommend using 1 or 1.5 for the VTOL engines, and 2 for the folding legs, and 3 for the leg extension. Alright, so when you're ready to go, press the 4 key to extend the legs, and then press the spacebar. This drops the ship down, and all you have to do is switch back to the command pod and load up your kerbals. You don't even have to use the ladders if you don't feel like it. Quick save, then throttle up and you're good to go. I usually tip the engines forward a tiny bit so I don't take off backwards. Once you're airborne, press the 3 key to pull the legs back. If they don't do anything, it's because you only pressed the 4 key once when you deployed the ship and the motors haven't stopped. Press the 4 key for the second time and they should retract. Start angling the engines forward more with the 2 key and you'll pick up some speed. Experiment with the angle you want to use for flying around. At low speeds, you'll only want a little bit of forward rotation. Landing is fairly easy, but I found it to be a little harder than the stock version for some reason. It's probably because the whole design is heavier, but it really isn't too difficult. Go easy on the legs and you should be fine. Remember to find your hover point with the throttle and toggle the engines with the 5 key to descend gradually. If you need more info and help with landing VTOLs, check out my tutorial video. The landing legs can take a good beating, but those feet might break if you come in too hard. A sliding in isn't a problem though. But yeah, that about covers it. All three files will be available for download, including the original 100% stock version and the two modded IR90 and IR180. Test them out and tell me what you think. I've already got some more ideas running through my head on how to modify them some more. Thanks a ton for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the new bubble show. Until next time, take it easy.